we're gonna have to wait for the gunfire to stop. Fuck's sake. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Today we are talking about an author that is near and dear to my heart, someone I grew up reading. Maybe not grew up, but uh, I certainly came of age reading this author. I remember going down to Walden Books and looking for his stuff. Finally ended up running out of his stuff because I had read all of his stuff and I still don't think that he is publishing nowadays. I know that like uh, Bloodshot Books and a couple other places are offering reissues um, of his stuff, but I don't think he's still writing, and I haven't found too much information about him. So jumping into it, the first book I want to talk about is one of my favorite vampire novels of all time, and I hate vampires. I think they're overdone. Um, I don't like any of the classics. I don't like Dracula and that stuff. I like 30 Days a Night. I like Let the Right One In, and I like uh, Stephen King's Salem's Lot. I like those books, um, but... I don't actually have this one. It's one of the ones that was uh, destroyed. So Fear Me uh, is a terrific book by Stephen Laws. Um, it's one of those books that I remember very specifically certain scenes. I don't want to give any spoilers in this because I want people to go out and find them. It has been a pain in the ass trying to find this book um, in a good condition. I've only come across two, good con uh, two of his books in good condition, and those are the old Leisure Press uh, ones. We'll get to that in a second, but Tor, the uh, sci-fi fantasy publisher, has published a couple of his things also, which brings me to number four, which is Ghost Train. This book is so much fun. If you are a fan of any kind of supernatural train thing, <laughs> so much dust, sorry, uh, any kind of supernatural train, uh, I know there, I spoke to somebody who enjoyed Bentley Little's The Burning, uh, that kind of thing was... <laughs> Sorry, that title always makes me giggle. But at number four, we got Ghost Train. Um, I, I, will, I will never forget uh, Stephen Laws introduced me to the over-the-top horror that was not silly. And that's one of the things I'm going to touch on as we keep on going. Um, all too often, even back when I was a teenager, I would read horror and I'd be like, well, that's just stupid. Now, it might be fun, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that uh, 80s horror can't be fun or a slasher or any of that stuff can't be fun. It's a lot of fun, but as far as goofy or what's normally seen as cheesy, over-the-top horror actually being unsettling or bothersome, that's one of the things that Laws did right. Next we have Spectre, uh, which is an amazing book. It's about the the pe it's the nightclub I believe is called Spectre in it, but um, it also has a bit of like Back to the Future going on because people are disappearing from the photograph. Um, in fact, you can see kind of in this one. I love the cover of this one because it doesn't fit all that well, other than you know the what you know the people that are being killed off in the book kind of deal. Uh, there is one that has like an old, I guess it's supposed to be the club up on a hill. I think it's the uh, the one that you can buy today um, has that cover. That one doesn't fit very well at all. I have seen one cover that fit it um, and I haven't found it anywhere, but I, I love this book. I gave it five stars on Goodreads and it's one of the, it's like a quintessential 80s horror novel. Um, it has all the the weird events that just don't seem to go together whatsoever, and then by the end of the book, somehow the author pulls it. Uh, well, the good ones, the author pulls it all together to one instance. This is also some of the inspiration for my. Uh, it's out of print now, but my novel Dastardly Bastard. A lot of the stuff in there was that uh, this book inspired a lot of that book. All right, um, at number. Let's see here. That was number three. So at number two, number one and number two are going to be a tie. So let's just call both of these number one because these are books that have stayed with me ever since I, I first read them. And a lot of what I do today in my own work actually comes from inspiration from Stephen Laws. So the first one we're going to talk about is The Worm, which is hard to pick up on the camera. But The Worm is a fantastic novel about small town horror. Uh, there's, it's, you're awakening this long buried evil, and it's some of the coolest, coolest action in horror you will come across. And that's one of the things that Laws does right. Um, even more so, I would say he's better at it than Bentley Little. And Bentley Little really, really, that's his, that's his niche, that's his thing. He, 
he does supernatural, almost action adventure stories, um, where there's a, there's a group of people or an individual going up against this massive entity or this this unstoppable creature, um, and that's what Little does very well. But I would say that that Laws does it even better, um, to the point where I can reread his stuff nowadays and still enjoy it. Where I can't, I'm not enjoying the layman's. I'm not enjoying the littles. I'm not enjoying those things anymore, but here I am. I still enjoy these books. I just reread The Worm last year. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, and then number one, part two is Dark Fall. This book is about uh, a skyscraper. There's another book by Dean Koontz. Please don't get these two confused. Uh, there's another book by Dean Koontz. It came out roughly around the same time called Dark Fall. Uh, Dean Koontz's book is amazing also. That one's on my top, uh, I think my top ten, five, whatever, of Dean, of Dean Koontz's books. But this one, this one is about a skyscraper. The, I believe the whole skyscraper becomes possessed or becomes an alternate reality kind of deal. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the 80s movie My Science Project. I think it was called that. But that's kind of what this reminds me of, but with more violence and more gore and whatnot. Um, I remember... So so much about I'm I'm gonna read this one pretty soon. Um, I I reread the worm first to make sure that I would still enjoy his stuff, um, and I read Spectre for the first time just a couple of years ago. Um, but this one is exceptional. I remember being on the edge of my seat, not knowing where this was going, what was happening. And that's another thing that Laws you know he constantly throws curveballs for his readers. Uh, he has other books out there, Frighteners of. Uh, Ferocity, I think. Yeah, Ferocity. He's got this one. I have almost all of his stuff. I don't have The Frighteners. I'm not even sure if his The Frighteners is the same. Is that what the Michael J. Fox movie was based on? I've never read that one because I've never been able to find it. Um, I know Bloodshot Books did a, a re-release, a reissue of it, but I haven't gotten around to grabbing that one. Mainly because, and this is going to sound terrible, but mainly because I want it in this version. I want the you know mass market paperback. And with, you know, modern day presses, usually it's either 6x9 or 5x8, and I want one of these old sons of bitches. So, if anybody out there has a copy this size, you know, just regular mass market paperback of The Frighteners, please let me know. I'd be willing to buy it off you for a decent price, I would say, but we'll, we'll talk. Just send me a message. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye! I was shocked that, uh... I didn't get any messages yesterday about where uh, Thursday Theorist is. I appreciate that. I've just stopped responding to him at this point. Um, it's not a big deal. Uh, I'm, it, it'll come back when it comes back. But I, I'm, I'm done promising, you know, the people that Thursday Theorist, hey, it'll be back next week, and me still not being able to have, you know, catch up what I need to catch up on. Um, I have other obligations, uh, reading obligations, that I have to get done before, you know, I can continue on with that. And one of the books that I'm reading right now is 700 pages. The paperback is 700 and I think 60 pages long. So I'm currently trying to work through that. Um, I could just toss up like a, a BS episode of for like a, let's say um, what's the uh, storm is storm of the century, but I actually want to reread that one too. Um, it, they're short enough that I actually want to get through them and actually do a deep dive into these books, like I did with all the rest of them. Um, in the middle of the series, uh, I I kind of you know just kind of ran through them quickly. I ended up having to do two episodes for Bag of Bones because I went through it so quickly. I had to do some do some fixes and whatnot, and I'm not too happy with that. Um, to this day, you know, there there are episodes of Thursday Theorists that I want to re refilm. So nowadays, I am just waiting until I have all the information that I could possibly get um, before I do the Thursday Theorists. So for you guys out there that are bearing with me, I appreciate it. Um, and the people who, you know, are upset that there's no Thursday Theorists probably aren't watching this video anyways. But I just want to let you guys know, the ones that have been patient, that I appreciate you. Bye-bye.